Yes. Uh, for those of you who need the data, you can go on my website very creatively, stephanieforford.com slash open data, and you have the download of the data and the track with software right there. And then I already shared the link for Surface. So once you download the data, for, the, for those of you who did the tutorial uh, during the conference, you already have the folder. It's exactly the same folder. So don't worry downloading it. And you will be able to download the Tractography folder as a zip file. If you double click on it, it unzips. And then you have the data, as you can see, you still have to see. Um, and the software packages for the different operating systems, as well as a serial number to log in. You can get your own. It just takes a while for it to come through in your inbox. So we usually provide it. OK. You all happy with this so far? Yes. Yes. Great. OK. In that case, let's fire up track this. Da -da -da -da. Here we go. This opening for all of you. Yeah. Cool. I'm just going to go in full screen so you can see it well. And then the first thing we do is go to file open track or scene, file, open track or scene. And then it gives you the option to navigate to the folder that you just downloaded, which is the tractography folder. In there, you have the data folder. And then because I already saved the scene from the conference, so there's two files that I can open. But in theory, you should only have the TOK file in here that you can open. And for those of you who downloaded it from my website, you probably only have the TOK in there, unless I messed up and uploaded the my folder. <laughs> um, so just select a WPO2 TOK file. What you need to know about this file is it's a reduced file um, for training purposes. So it's not like a full, wonderful, perfect tractography for publications. It's slightly reduced in the streamline count to avoid people crashing. Because those of you who worked with us before know we like to crash. Don't forget to save. <laughs> voila. So when you open the file, this is what it looks like. And then you can see those white boxes down here. We don't like it. We need a brain. So you come over here to the white head with the green plus. And then you have an MNI152 file in the same folder. And you just OK that and open that file. Can I get a thumbs up or a head nod if you see the same thing? Cool. Half of you are there. <laughs> Fantastic. OK. So uh, what you can see is that we have this white box around our tractography. And we don't actually want that because what that indicates is that there is a region of interest, basically, that is the entire plane. And it shows us all the connections going through this plane. But when you look at it, you can see that we're missing the uncinate fasciculus, for example, which runs just anterior to that plane. Um, so this plane effectively is a filter for the tractography, and we don't want to filter tractography. So what you do is you come to the overview panel over here, and you click on track one. And then you right click or control click for Mac, and you just brutally delete that file. And it disappears. Now it's still there. Um, we just can't see it anymore, but now you have deleted the filtered tractography to have the full tractography in the background. Now, I thought what we could do, given that the tutorial is 20 minutes, right? Yeah. So we can dissect one tract and then visualize it in surface. So I'm open to suggestions. Do you have a favorite tract? Which one do you want to do? First one, first serve. Be quick. SLF. SLF. Which one? Um, two. Two. 
Ooh. Where <laughs> does it go? Is... Where does it go? Oh, I don't know. Can anyone help? If you don't know where it goes, we can't dissect it. Be brave. There's no wrong answers. Well, technically there is, but it's not an issue. <laughs> Okay, what, what kind of connection is the SLF? Let's start with that. Association, commissure, projection. It's, it's a chance, one out of three. It's an association. Yes, okay. It's an association, which means it connects uh, different parts within the same hemisphere. Which lobes is it connecting? I believe it's frontal to temporal. It's right. Mm -hmm. It's frontal parietal. So the SLFs are frontal parietal connections, but you're also right, there is some confusion about terminology in the literature that also classifies sometimes the arcuid fasciculus as the SLF, and the arcuid is a frontal temporal. But strictly speaking, SLFs are frontal parietal connections. They're longitudinal, as the name says, superior longitudinal fasciculus, whereas the arcuid is arching, hence the name, so uh, technically the arcuate should not be called the SLF. So frontal parietal, given that it's SLF2, is probably in the middle between one and three, right? So the SLFs um, quite nicely, if I move slightly more interior, sorry, wrong, here we go. So we see here, if I click here, tick. Now we are in the superior frontal here. That will be the SLF1 that occupies the superior frontal. Then the next one is the middle frontal and then we have the inferior frontal gyrus. And it's very easy, one, two, three. So the SLF2 runs just here in the white matter and it's connecting to the parietal lobe. So what we do for the SLF is two regions of interest, one the frontal lobe, one the parietal lobe. And I suggest we start with uh, where we are actually. Let me go slightly more posterior. Voila. So now we see the corpus callosum here in the middle. We see the cingulate gyrus on top that has the cingulum bundle in there. And I'm just going to zoom in by using two fingers on a touchpad, or you can use the wheel on your mouse, just so I can see it a little bit better. And then I'm going to click here, just so all the planes jump in the right position. Okay. Now, just for reference, I'm on Y81 at the moment. And then we can draw our first region of interest using hand draw which we didn't actually get to in the workshop last time. So you come to region of interest, new region, and you select hand draw. Okay. Now what that does is, first of all, it creates your region of interest up here and we wanna rename that one. So you come to the property, click on region of interest. You double click on the name I'm just going to call it frontal. And at this point, it's worth saving your scene. <laughs> Do you want to save it all? Yes, please. I'm just going to call it tutorial and save it. And you might want to command S after every little step you do. <laughs> OK, so now we named our region, but we don't have a region yet, right? So you can see that down here in the region of interest panel is selected the pen and the box. We don't want the box. We want the freehand symbol. So I'm just going to select the wiggly wave. And then you literally just going to come in your um, Corona section here and you start delineating the white matter of the MFG and you go slightly deeper towards the single limb. Here. 
once you're happy with your shape, make sure you close it. So there shouldn't be any gaps that you can see. And then you come back to your region of interest and you select the bucket. Now I'm just gonna show you something, don't do that. <laughs> but in case you didn't close your region, if you click on it with the bucket, it fills your entire plane. So if that happens, it just means that your delineation didn't close properly. And if that happens, you can either come to the little blue arrow here or just command Z and undo. Here we go. Just gonna save it. Um, so select the bucket and then click inside your structure and it will fill up your hand draw region. Okay. Now we need a second region and this time we wanna be in the parietal lobe. So, oops, sorry, let me give you some reference. Coming to the lateral surface, we have the Sylvian Fisher, Heschel's gyrus, Broca's area roughly here. And then <clears throat> we see the separation, pre, post, central. So here's the supramarginal at the end of the Sylvian Fisher. If I just, whoa, sorry. and click. If I click here, I know that I'm in the parietal lobe. And I go slightly more forward. And then for the second region, we can be very, very generous. <clears throat> so what you want to do is you come to region of interest, select a new region, and this time we can, let's do hand draw, just because it's pretty. Uh, it selects the pen and make sure you select the wiggly line rather than the bucket. And then you can literally just grab the entire parietal white matter. Okay. So now you don't have to be too precise. You literally just grab everything in the parietal lobe. Then you use the bucket again and you fill it in. As you can see, we have our two regions, one in the frontal lobe and one in the parietal lobe. We didn't rename this one yet, so I'm just going to quickly do that. I'm just going to call it parietal and save again. So to rename, you click on the region, you select a Roy property, you double click on the name and you give it the name you want. If your colors are different for your regions of interest, don't worry, they're randomly assigned, it has absolutely no meaning. Okay, and now we right click, we select a frontal region of interest, right click or control click for Mac users and you create a new track group. So what we're getting is the corpus callosum. We're also picking up a little bit of cortical spinal. And if I swing around, da -da -da -da, there's our SLF. And as you can see, because I was quite generous with my region, I'm also picking up some arcuate uh, connections. Now, <clears throat> in order to uh, really select the SLF rather than everything that goes through the frontal plane. You come to the overview plane here, you select track one, you right click or control click, and then you toggle, i.e. combine your frontal region and your parietal region. And what this will do is it will show you all the streamlines that go through both regions. And da da da, cleans it up. Because I was a bit generous, I'm literally just going to get rid of those um, temporal connections. And there's a quick and easy way of doing that today, safe in between, is you just use the axial slice here. You come down, 
until you're at the level of Heschel's gyrus here. So you know you're in the temple and you can now see that you're not touching on any SLF connections anymore. And I'm just gonna do a third region of interest, another hand draw. But this time I'm just gonna select a square. And we are on the left side, right? So I'm just gonna cover the temple look. Just make sure that your region does not touch the SLF. So you get all the, if you have them, you might actually have a cleaner dissection than I do at the moment. But if you have those temporal branches, you select those. And then I'm gonna rename that tract. <sighs> Sorry. Yeah, reopen please. realized I was wearing and we're recording this. Can you cut that out? <laughs> we'll edit it. <laughs> this and Zoom. It's a bad, bad combo. Why is this not opening? Yes, you have access. Okay. Lost my mind region. I'm gonna come back down until I hit Hashel's gyrus. And draw, square, boom, take out all the temple, make sure I don't touch any of the connections I want, rename as not, save, yes, tutorial. Okay, so track one, if you right click and you toggle it with the region that I just called not region, you will see that what we're left with is all the frontal temporal connections. But we don't actually want them. We want to exclude exactly those. So what you can do is in the property window track, you have a region of interest filter. And if you look at it, it currently says for the frontal region, show any part, for the parietal region, show any part, and for the not region, show any part. What we want to do is double click on the not any part and instead of any part, we select no part. That means now it shows us only, ah, it's cool, isn't it? <laughs> it shows us only what's going through the um, frontal and the parietal region, but excludes everything that goes temporal. So now we have an SLF, and now we can rename this tract as SLF2. Save. Okay. Now you can beautify it very briefly by coming to render. And by default, line is selected, but to have it paper perfect, you want the tube. And then increase the radius from 0 0.05 to 0 0.2. You can also change the color if you like and choose your favorite color. And then if you want to hide all the regions of interest, you can just click on the regions of interest up here, right click and hide, and then you have a kind of beautiful SLF. Okay. Now, what we want to do is we want to make the visualization even more pretty. And there was also a request to show stimulation points with it. So what you can do is you come to um, the track that you dissected here in the overview, and you can save it as a file. So you can save it as a TRK file, <clears throat> or you can even save it as a STL file to 3D printed, which is what I do most of the time. Super cool. So we're just going to call it SLF2 and save it as a TRK file. Could I ask you a very quick question? Mm -hmm. How do you um, delete the knot? Could you show us again? Because I, I think I got lost there. Sorry about that. So if I show them all again, you select a track. Mm -hmm. Well, first you toggle them. So you have all three regions yeah. in there. Okay. 
and you select the track and down here in the property you have mm -hmm. what's called the region of interest filter oh yeah and it says any part by default if you double click on it for the knock region and you select no part oh perfect they yeah. disappear and then to get the trk file you right click on slf2 save as give it a name save as trk thank you okay now so this is yeah fine this is a very quick and dirty way of doing a section in trackers now, the beauty of the data set that you downloaded is that it is already in MNI space. So this is very handy if we now open Surface. Surface, yes. Can I ask, um, yeah. what is actually meant by MNI space? It's the Montreal Neurological Institute space and it's just a coordinate system. Okay. That is basically a standard space that we, well, there's multiple standard spaces. <laughs> but the MNI is one of the main standard spaces that we use where you can register everything to and like all the atlases that you download, they will be in MNI space. It's like the standard space to do neuroimaging at the group level. Okay. Thanks. Okay. So... This is Surface. And you can see I opened an MNI 152 template brain here. If that didn't open for you, just go to, um, it's not in this list here. You uh, can open it, but any, any MNI will do. So I just select this one. This one means it's the Montreal Neurological Institute standard template for 152 brains averaged into the brain. Now, when you have that, you can rotate it. It's very fast, like it's a super responsive software. And you can, this is probably what it looks like on most of your screens, hang on. This is probably what you see. Um, so by reducing the X-ray, it becomes lighter. And then here you can, choose whichever color setting you like. There are some really cool things like wireframe, for example. It's cool for brain art things as well. Um, I'm just gonna use the Heidrich side of just like the pale brain. Now, what you can do next is you can add tracks and you can overlay things. So let's try to add our track. So you just say add track and it automatically, in my case, opens the folder that I was working on, but if not, navigate to the tractography folder, data, and you should have your SLF TRK file in there. Open that and boom, it's right there on your brain. Yay, I see some happy faces. Um, how do we make the brain <clears throat> see through? Uh, I, by choosing Heidrich Seidel, and then you have the x ray option here. Okay, okay. thanks. You can also make the track a bit more transparent or more prominent. By doing that, you can also change where the light is on the brain. Um, a lot of features. Can't can't really say I worked them out all. There's also a way of one of them is cutting into the brain. Yeah, take some playing around. Anyways, so another cool thing you can do here is that you see the option tracks, and currently it's set to directional but you can also put the scalar information on it. So you can put the HMOA or FA or MD or whatever you wanna show. And if the scale doesn't work, you can also change the threshold and say, well, I wanna, oops, no, 0 0.2. Um, 
So you can plot any scalar information that you had in track list, you can plot in here as well. And then to add stimulation points or atlases to see where you are and how it works, you come back to overlay. You can add an overlay. And then it opens in the sample folder. But on the top, you have an Atlas folder that comes with Surface. And then you can choose your Atlas. You have the AL Atlas from the team in Bordeaux. You have the Aisha Atlas from the team in Bordeaux. I don't actually know what CIT stands for. And you have the Ulich Harvard Atlas. So I'm just going to go with the Aisha Left Hemisphere Atlas. Oh no, actually, let's go with the Right Hemisphere so we see our track better, okay? Aisha Right Hemisphere. Let me just recap briefly. Overlay, add overlay. Atlas, Aisha Right Hemisphere. You okay that and boom. Now you have all the atlas on one side and your track on the other. And obviously if you, you can do that with your uh, stimulation points or your surgical cavity, whatever you do, you can visualize it here in relation to the track as long as they are in the same space and you can beautify it as much as you like. You can also split the Aisha ALL Atlas to, glass atlas, whichever one you want to use, and only show the regions where the SLF is actually connecting to. And then you take a very high resolution pretty picture for your paper. There you go, half an hour on how to visualize your tracks in a nice way. Any questions? How would you reference this um, brain image? Uh, you go through the process, so you, you describe your pre-processing for the tractography or where you downloaded it. Yeah. Um, and then you say that you dissect it and track this using a X-Roy approach. Um, mm. And then you can just say visualization done in Surface and you put the internet link oh, okay. um, for NIHR. Thank you. Surface was actually written by the same guy who wrote MRI Cron, if you know that one, uh, Chris Rodden. He does fantastic software and they're completely free and beautiful. <laughs> um, I was wondering, um, I've, I've followed along when, with your tutorial and I think mine looks slightly different. So I guess my question is, how do you know if you've done it wrong? How do you know if you're showing the wrong track? <laughs> yes. So, uh, as I mentioned, this is not the most beautiful SLF I've dissected in my life. Um, but that's also because the data set that we provide for the workshop is slightly reduced in streamlines. That's why I said if you want to use our tractography for actual visualizations, you want to download the full file to have a beautiful tractogram. And then, um, usually, if you aren't too familiar with the tracts, the first option is to use an atlas, like the Atlas of Human Brain Connections. <laughs> um, you can download from the bcblab.com, you can download the regions um, that we used and the tracks that we did. So you see if your track actually matches the probability map. And um, we're also currently working on a digital atlas that hopefully should be ready soon. Um, that will make your life a lot easier in terms of knowing where you are and uh, what regions and everything. And we're also going to provide each and every single track as a file like this that you can just put in and visualize. Um, and then how do you know you're showing the right track? Well, check with the literature. Uh, if it hasn't been described, you need multiple points of evidence like lesion study, stimulation studies, or your own data in that case, um, to show that this is a plausible anatomical connection, not just an artifact. And then you can give it a very cool name, like the Alice tract. <laughs> Thank you. Hi, Stephanie. Hi. You had fun? 
I did. Well, I'm sorry I couldn't join you earlier, but uh, this uh, parcellation looks stunning. What is it? Uh, so this is, uh, on request of the group, a SLF2 in the MNI brain. And on this side, we see the Aisha Atlas from Bordeaux. And is it's all it visualized in surface. You've been involved in developing? Uh, no, but I work with the, so I'm in the department where it was developed, but it was developed before I joined and now I helped improve it a little bit. Right. One of our aims is um, as a group to define some surgically relevant parcels, for example, ventral premotor, dorsal premotor, pre-SMA, SMA. And we struggle to identify something consistent and um, without any inter-observer variability. Particularly, Anne is trying to standardize mapping for with a multi-institutional collaboration with some quite distinguished scientists. So how do you think we can create a, a model of these parcels which are relevant for us? Let's say if we have a, a sketch that shows exactly where our parcels are, can we translate this into a computer generated image? Does, does this make sense, my question? Yeah. Yeah, no, no, it does. Um, you can definitely, depending on how you get your parcels, if you have a drawing, you can sit down and actually manually redraw it on a digital brain. Like you can do that in FSL, like Fossilize or MRI Cron. Um, that's a, that's a nice job sitting down and redrawing it. Um, if you have stimulation points from TMS or whatever, you can convert them and make them fit um in the mni space that's doable um and then i guess what you want to do in that case because it's hard to define a region because they don't necessarily the function of the region doesn't necessarily enter the border of the gyrus right so what you will end up with is a probability map of where that function is located rather than saying this neat parcel of the brain is responsible for that part here we go Right, so that's an example. Yeah. <laughs> so this is one of the projects that Anne is working on. And um, mm -hmm. Anne is working in everything except language. So for example, you have dorsal prefrontal, um, uh, dorsal lateral prefrontal cortex, uh, yeah. uh, premotal ventral, premotal dorsal, pre-SMA, SMA. We segmented the supramarginal gyrus according to Cathy Price's paradigm. And we have a similar model for the angular gyrus. So if we were to translate this into a computer generated image, how can we do this? So you would uh, start with, now let me see if I can actually show you. It would be a manual job of uh, labor and work. Um, if I just reshare my screen. Sure. Um, if you can let me share. Let me stop sharing. Sure. So one thing you could do is Chris Broaden's other software, which is very easy to use. I think it's hiding behind you guys. Yes. Here we go. So you take MRI Cron, for example, and you open a template brain. Anna, you're taking notes? Yes. So you can create your own template or you can use an MNI template that comes with the software. So you have the Colin, uh, you have several atlases, Colin without the skull, and you have the Broadman maps and a bettered Colin brain. But you can download various MNI templates online. Um, <clears throat> and then it would be a matter of navigating to oops, the part of the brain that you're interested in and that you have in your map. And then hang on, let me hide the video panel. Can we do this on a 3D brain, Stephanie? Because these slices are going to be very difficult for us to outline. So you have to outline it on, on the 2D. Right. And then it creates a volume. I see. And then you have it in 3D and you can check your 3D and then manipulate your 3D. But basically you come to draw 
Um, bum, 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 bum. Where is it? Pen. And I'm just brutally going to draw something now. So let's say we're going to go for Hashem Stars. Yeah. You draw it, you have the bucket, just like an MRI cron. You fill it in, and you have to draw the entire um, structure. And then you save it as a volume of interest. Oh. Does this look smooth on the image, though? Yes, there's an option to smooth it here. You have some smoothing options as well. Um, and then you can open that volume of interest in surface on the 3D on the same brain. Or also, let me see if this actually does a nice job or crashes my computer. Ah, so I used a brain that still has the skull around it, which obviously doesn't give you a nice 3D rendering. But you could easily double check. Um, hang on, let me. Ah, just close the MRI cron. Um, bum, 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 bum. Let me, here we go. If I just open a file that has no skull. Uh, no. Okay. So if we then go to view and no window and render, you can now see the 3D. And you can scroll through and you can manipulate it in that way. Right. And um, second follow up question to this, you mentioned the positive stimulation sites, which are, again, a very important part for us. So if we have this 3D brain and we know for example, I can tell one of my students that this is where it's stimulated from the brain. How we can um, create this a heat map or a, a cloud of positive stimulation sites in a specific area? So depending on what type of stimulation you um, use, so we, we did it with TMS, for example, and on the TMS machine, you can export the stimulation points as nifty files. And then any imaging software can read it. And because it's a nifty file in the end, you can just use FSL. And there's a function in FSL to dilate your region of interest. So you can make them bigger. You can also <clears throat> merge them together. And by merging them, get like a percentage map of where all the subjects fall. And that will then create um, a file for you. That's one way of doing it. Right. So the ones we use are. Uh, surgical stimulation so it's bipolar or monopolar stimulation so i don't think it doesn't we don't have the nifty files from the tms if we set a point in this 3d map can we do it this way yeah so instead of uh, saving as, as a volume of interest you can also save it as a nifty file and then do the same process the TMS machine should usually, if it's navigated TMS, it should be able to export the stimulation points as a file that is at least convertible to a Nifty file. Well, I don't use TMS anymore. I used it a few years ago and I just okay. I wasn't that impressed. So I abandoned it. Um, <laughs> you're not a TMS fan, are you? Well, I stopped using it too. <laughs> there you go. Great minds. <laughs> All right, Stephanie. Well, thank you so much. And again, I'm sorry I missed uh, your talk, but it sounds like everybody's excited. So thanks again and hope to catch up soon. You're welcome. Thanks for the invitation. And thank if you, you have any more questions, feel free to uh, email or ping me, ping me a line. Thank, thank you. you. Bye. Bye. -bye. Thank you.